the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Now, this is not the way I usually start a sermon, but um, I rarely remember sermons. I, I really don't. I mean, I, I'm amazed when you all will come up to me at times and go, I remember when you said this, and I'm like, I'm glad one of us does. But I read this text this week as I was getting ready to think about it, and I just remember this sermon when I was a little boy about Bartimaeus. And it was a bishop who was giving the sermon, and because my dad was the priest where um, I grew up, and so I never listened when he preached, right? And so, that's oh, funnier than that, come on. <laughs> and, um, but he talked about blind Bart. And I just remember that. It just like sticks in my head. This, uh, this story about this blind man, blind Bart. And like Bartimaeus for me has such a, um, you know, Bart, you know, is like the kid down the street or on the Simpsons. You know, it's like you can kind of imagine. Bartimaeus was a little far for me as a kid. But it really made it accessible, the story. And this story is amazing for me. Think about what happens. So, Jesus is a big deal, and he's walking out of Jericho, and Bartimaeus hears him coming, or hears about it. Hears about Jesus. And it is so classic, isn't it? Is that we, you know, Bartimaeus is, you know, on the side, at the margins, at the edge. And he cries out to Jesus, have mercy on me. And what does everybody around Jesus do? They shush him. They totally shush him. Isn't that so classic? You know, it's like what we do as humans, it's like we're, we're, you know, we're all together doing the thing and then somebody will like make us uncomfortable and we shush them. But that is like the thing about Jesus is that Jesus in everything that Jesus did, he reminded us and reminded those around him and reminded himself that we are all in this together. And we deny that to our peril. That when we, when one of us is suffering, we all suffer. When one of us is joyful, we all rejoice. And Jesus shushes the shushers and says, and then he does this incredible thing. He says, he stood still. Now, Jesus is my boss. It says right there, Jesus stood still. And my work in life, and I believe all of our works in life, as humans and as Christians in particular, is to imitate Christ. Folks, I need your prayers. Because I do not know how to stand still. But Jesus stood still. And he called them. And then this is amazing. He go, Bartimaeus comes to him. And Jesus doesn't presume, doesn't assume. One of the things that I'm aware of that I can get in the habit of doing and that I see us do as humans is that we kind of see a need in the world and we kind of assume or presume that we can go and we say this phrase all the time, and it's not a bad phrase. Take care of people. You know, this idea of taking care, which is great. I mean, I want to be taken care of. That sounds wonderful. But there's a way in which that can be um, kind of one-sided and not very helpful. And Jesus never falls into that trap. Because what does the first thing that Jesus does? What, what does he do when Bartimaeus is in his presence? He doesn't say, okay, this is what you need. If you just do this, that, and the other, you'll, everything will be fine. He asks 
a question. What do you want me to do for you? Now, those of you who are in relationships of any sort, um, the two that really come to mind for me are, you know, a partner for life or uh, if you're a parent of a teenager, this has come really helpful to me. Um, have you ever been in a situation with either, anybody, it, but those come to mind for me, either a partner or a child that's a teenager, and they come in and they're ranting, just venting, and they're, they're venting about a problem, you know, whatever that might be. Now, if you're like me, you have stepped into it more times than you can count by having the audacity to try to solve that problem. You know, oh, you see the solution, you're, oh, I'll, I'll take care, I'll do that thing. There's that incredible gift that somebody taught a lot of us is that you can ask a question first. Do you need to just vent or do you want to solve a problem? It's amazing how much better the relationship goes when I ask that question. It is amazing because it allows that person to be in charge of their own life, of their own process. We have this phrase in our baptismal covenant that is that we seek to respect the dignity of every human being. And luckily, our answer isn't, I will do it. It is, I will with God's help, <laughs> that we do it together with God's help. And respecting the dignity of another person sometimes is about asking a question first, even if the need is incredibly apparent to you. Bartimaeus was blind, physically blind. But Jesus still checked in and said, what do you want me to do? I must confess that this story really convicted me this week because I, not necessarily in a physical sense, but I feel like it is physical at times, I have blindness. I can just get going and just get going and going. And I realized that about when I was, during COVID, I felt like I could see pretty well. I was paying attention. You know, it was a really hard time, but it was very easy to pay attention. But in the last few years, I found myself getting back into those routines, and you get going, and you get going, and you get going and going, and the blinders get on. And what I found is that as I'm going through life, like Thursdays are a great example. Thursdays at, at St. John's are holy bedlam. They are wonderful. We have a, I usually start my day with a healing service and write one um, little service over here with about 10 or 20 people. It's awesome. And then there are people cooking next door, getting ready for common table. And there are diners and cooks and volunteers and there are all people. And what I started to realize and where I was convicted by a friend not too long ago is that I was kind of doing my job. You know what I mean? You just kind of get going and you're doing your job. But you're not really paying attention. And I mean, I am so, I would get going so fast and I was walking along and I was doing my thing, checking in with people, but I wasn't really paying attention. And I looked over and I saw my friend who had just shown up for that day at Common Table. And they were having a conversation and it was mutual. You could see it. You ever see people talking on the street and you know it's a two-way street? That they're really, it's a give and take. There's a connection there. And you're like, oh. And it was like Jesus took this lovely book and went, wham, right against my head. And I went, oh. Wake up, Rob. There is a phrase that I've heard recently 
that one of the most underappreciated and underutilized expression of love is to give someone your full attention. Think about that. Talk about convicting. I don't know how to stand still. I'm working on it. See, I've, all, I've not moved that much today. I'm doing a pretty good job. But also, you've probably experienced to me on a Sunday morning where I'm talking to you and I'm like looking over your head. I'm guilty of that. I'm on to the next thing. What's next? What's next? What's next? And the story, this encounter that Jesus has is so convicting in a good way of saying, Rob, stand still. Pay attention. Because what is happening, I believe, in this story and definitely in my life and maybe in yours and in this culture is that we're not paying attention to each other. And that Jesus is inviting us to do it, to let the blinders fall and to look and see one another. Because what I have found is that when I actually do that, things change for the better in my life. The way that I can hear one another, another person, and where I can encounter them. I've told this story a bunch of times, but it is very appropriate with this gospel. Susie Rayside shared with me a story about a friend who was blind and how they shared with her and a group of people that no one ever said hi to them on the street. And what was interesting is that their own blindness rendered them invisible to others. And I went, whoa. And I thought of my own actions. I have been that person. You see someone walking that is, has, maybe has a cane. My first reaction was usually to make way and to be kind, but I was usually silent. And I thought about that, and that's just this example and how often that happens across the board. This was years ago, and that story has transformed my life because there was a, not just because of this, but I did have an opportunity after I'd heard that story where I was walking on the street and somebody was approaching me that had a cane, a walking cane, to help them navigate. And instead of just making way and being quiet, I said, hi there, because you know how shy I am. <laughs> and the gentleman stopped and said, are you talking to me? And I said, yeah. And I told him the story. And he said, that is so true. And it has changed me. It has changed me from the inside of like, I want to be seen. I want people to know me. And I want to pay attention. And so what I encourage us each to do today is look at your life, examine it. Not with shame or guilt, but where have you put your blinders on? If you're of a certain age, probably my age and younger, one of my blinders is this rectangular thing that I hold in my hand and I scroll. I know no one else does that. It's just my problem. But it is amazing how we are distracted from looking at each other. And I'm not here to talk about the evils of technology. I'm here to talk about the gift of being connected and that Jesus never gives up on us. That day in Common Table when I witnessed my friend connecting was a holy slap. It has kind of, oh, and I feel like in that moment, 
Jesus said, you can see again. Take advantage of that. So my prayer for us as we try to live into this world that is so fraught, that is, you know, I don't know about you, but there are certain houses I walk by right now that have yard signs that make my teeth grind. I know nobody else has that problem either. <laughs> but don't put up the blinders. How do we practice sight and seeing each other? I know I'm going from meddling, I mean from preaching to meddling, but this homework of really working on wondering where your blindness might be. Where have you put on the blinders on your heart and on your mind? And lastly, I will ask for your prayers because I can put them on too. But the good news that we celebrate the good news that we proclaim is that Jesus doesn't give up on us, and Jesus stands before each and every one of us and says, what can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? My prayer for myself echoes Bartimaeus. Teacher, I wish to see again. Amen.